Okay, um, hello everyone, and welcome back to War Thunder now, a couple of new skins, that's what I got, um, one of which is T-34-1940, this is, uh, the trophy of the 18th Panzer Division, um, I do have three skins for this, one is this one, which is the, um, Soviet green, Another one is um, Panzergrau, or Panzer, Panzer Grey, German Grey. Then the other one is the um, is the yellow. Uh, is just the yellow that um, the other uh, German like mid tier, mid rank um, Panzer fours and stuff have that funny sort of just sort of sand yellow camouflage that they have, which isn't really camouflage at all. Um, but yeah, so that's a new thing. Um, Got a field repair up for these guys because they don't have any field repairs. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's um, one of the new skins that I got. Uh, what else is there? I can't remember. Um, don't think I got any new skins for the Soviets other than that. I did get another KV-1. I'll, um, KV-1 Zis 5 skin. Let me have a look. There's the 8th Panzer Division in the Panzer Grau, and then here's the other one. Which is, um, it doesn't have, it doesn't have wheels, which is the same as what happened with the KV-2. The wheels sort of disappeared when I put it on, but this is, um, what is it? LMN. I don't know, maybe a desert sort of skin, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it on the Panzer Grau because that's the that's the skin that I like. I prefer that skin, but the other one's just a nice, uh, you know, it has a bit more pattern to it. Um, don't think I've got anything. I was still looking for a KV-1L11 German skin, but still, I've kept with the um, rank 2 Soviets as slowly becoming German. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, for the British, ah, uh, yes, a new... Um, we can add a new chapter to the Hurricane Mark One story. Um, now, now we're Armenian, <laughs> so it can either be. Let, let's just have a look here. It can either be Romanian, German, Anzac, or French. Um, yeah, I can. I can almost choose the camouflage based on which map I get now when I load up with the Hurricane Mark One. Still looking for a Mark Two German skin. Um, Sea Hurricane, obviously, still Night Fighter. Um, there you go, Sea Hurricane Mark 1C is still a Night Fighter. Once it loads up, there you go, Night Fighter. Um, and then the Mark IV is still in the German. Um, sorry, still in the Desert one. Um, but what I've done just now is... I don't think i got anything for America. I got a German one for the Lee, which I put on, but I haven't actually driven the Lee yet. Customization. Template USM3 Lee, here you go, German. German Lee. Don't know why Germany would want a Lee, but uh, here you go, they got one. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, we obviously know about the M3 Stuarts. Um, M18, we all know, is still German. Yeah, we know that. Um, I think I got a skin for this one, a German one. Got a couple of Panzer IV skins, I just need to actually research this Panzer IV. Oh yeah, I got a uh, Panzer III M skin. Let me, uh, customization. Sorry, not the Panzer III M, the Panzer III N. This one, yep, yeah, that was it. Customization. There you go, so it's no longer the, um, it's now this. Doesn't look much like a skin, but it is. As you can see, it's got the, uh, it's got the numbers there. Um, yeah, it's no longer in the uh, sort of strange neon green green and stuff that I have. Um, yeah, and I think that's about the extent of the skins I can remember I fitted. Um, but now, the one new thing which I did is that I was looking on the um, War Thunder community um, camouflages, and I decided to get some World War One skins. So, four, so we do have a rank three, uh, five, sorry, aircraft in a German rank one, uh, World War One biplane, um, lineup. 
This is an Albatross 8. Um, I think this is an Albatross 8 as well. Yep, this is another Albatross 8. And this is an Albatross Mark 5. Um, or an Albatross 5, which was flown by an ace. I can't remember his name, but uh, this was an ace's plane in World War One. Um, the CR-42 has also got um, a World War One skin here. Um, let me actually customization. Let me actually get rid of the DAC insignia and of that those other German crosses. There you go. So and then for the for this one, it's now a Spad. A Spad a Spad Seven is what this is. Um, let me again remove the DAC symbol and the cross. There you go. So yeah, I think we'll play a couple of games in these. Um, let me actually just check the modifications. Oh, I have everything for this. Nice. Didn't I? Didn't know it's been ages since I played these. Uh, going with Universal. Yep. Yeah, so researched everything for that one. What about the C1 modifications? Eh, researching bombs, then going for engine, then that'll be it. What about the 51A1? Uh, modifications. Engine, then we need to get offensive 7mm and then the new 7.92mm. Okay, and then we've almost done with that. CR42, still got some modifications I need to get for it. Yeah, radiator offensive at 12 millimeters. yeah. Um, but I think we'll we'll fly out in World War One. Oh, actually, can't cancel that. Damn it. Ah, I did just remember two more skins that I got were for the Nimrods. The Nimrod Mark II is now a swap with Camel, and... Uh, the Nimrod Mark I is a French uh, Aces um, aircraft. So, let's um, get ourselves... Um, let's fly ourselves out in a Albatross 8. Obviously it's not an actual Albatross 8, but it's the best we can do without actually having World War One aircraft around. So you go. Our lovely Albatross 8. What's up? Okay. That was strange. Um, my drop box was just open. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to take a screenshot. God damn it. Uh, right, let's go for this P 36 in our World War 1 era aircraft. Because why not? P 36 has already got KI 43 on his tail. Closing far, fast. And he's dead. Okay then. Let's go straight to some ground targets, just like in World War One. There wasn't much aircraft shooting aircraft action really in World War One, was there? It was more shoot up. More shoot up uh, troops on the ground. Yeah, that got him. Somebody on my tail, I'm fairly certain. Enough to make buffer line. Okay. Just somebody making a low strafe at me, possibly. Oh, no, there he is, he's a Mark 1 late hurricane. Well, let's kill this triple A. There you go. Kill your 88s. Oh dear. Mark 1 hurries on me still. Oh, and he's hit my engine. No, oh, you can't shoot up an albatross. Who do you think you are, Hurricane? In your vastly superior single seat fighter. Damn it. That was a vintage, man. You can't you can't just go around killing uh, omnipurpose. Killing vintage World War One aircraft. Well at least we killed two ground targets in that. Um Jump into our Albatross 5. Hurricane. Oh, there's an aircraft down there. P36, BF110. I'm coming for you. World War 1 style. AKA in a single seat biplane. There we go. Let's 
There's a hit. I'm not getting close enough to actually deal with this guy. Yeah, he's actually far, far faster than my albatross. Um, never mind. There's a Nimrod. 109. I-153. Also, it's my own unspoken rule that I won't play Soviet aircraft unless I have German skins for it. The aircraft line, I mean. I was shooting at that P-26. P shooter, but no longer am. Yeah, he's out of range now in his, in his single winged aircraft. His monoplane. Oh, kill assist. On the P-26. Nice. Oh, there we get it. What's that one am I doing? I don't know. One thing that he's not doing is shooting at us, so I'm happy about that. Um, still got that I-53 over there. We're barely making over 140 mile an hour. Which is actually faster than an actual albatross would have been flying, but still, it's slow in War Thunder terms. Because you're not meant to have World War One planes in War Thunder, damn it. This is World War Two. Most realistic plane simulator. Right. You keep saying that. 109 still over there. Uh, is there any ground targets left? No, not over here, really. MC200. Fury Blenheim. Uh, pea shooter. Oh, down goes that I-153. There's another HE-51. Oh, there you go. This is becoming a melee. Come on, chaps. Now you into him. Oh. Oh, and well, they've, they've all killed each other. Well, nothing left but some ground targets, so let's go kill them if we can actually catch them in time. And that P-26 is... Let's strafe this armor cop. There you go, that go. Shoot up this SD KFZ222. That got him. I believe I have an enemy fighter on my tail. Oh no, it's just another HE51. Yeah, that's a bad thing to do, don't do that. A hawk. I oh, know. Uh, critical. Set him on fire, he set me on fire there. And there's a KI, oh, I'm losing controls. Biplanes tend to stay on fire. Because. No, no, I'm out of fire. Nice. Uh, the hawk is still dying. Uh, I'm still dying. Also, it is slightly overheating. Uh, I'm gonna crash into the mountain. Yep. Somebody's still shooting at me. There you go. Um, well, down goes another precious um, <laughs> World War One vintage albatross. Let's see if this one has any any better luck. I have no idea what aircraft this is actually. I mean, I know it's a CR forty two, but the skin for it. it even though I did put the skin on right, like right now, I was really just looking for World War One as the tagline. I wasn't really worrying too much about about what actual type of plane it was. I mean, I only cared about which country it was because if it was like, because you know the albatrosses work because they're on German aircraft. Oh, this Junkers isn't going down. I from my World War One bullets. Die from my 50s. And oil leak, I think. That was either me or the other guy. And okay, I Tim. See, even though we're biplanes, we're still able to keep up with the Stuka. Shows how slow the Stuka is. Gotta be careful because of these other guys that are like swarming around. 
Uh, this would be so much easier if I actually had... If I actually had anti-air bullets. Well, what are they? Belts for air targets, that's it. If only I had them, but no, I haven't researched them. This, this JU-87 is taking a lot of punishment. There you go, that guy. Ah, oh, only because I took out the pilot. Jeez. Well, unlike in World War One, he actually has a parachute to bail out. Well, he doesn't, but... Just like World War One, we've killed the pilot. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there would have been a lot of pilot kills because biplanes. Come on, hit, get hit by my shots. There you go. One more half track up. Yeah, one more. Just the care said two, two, two. Put half guys another half track. Now there is that one armored car left. He is the last armoured over here. Oh, somebody just crashed trying to kill that armoured car. Well, half track. Trying some ranging shots over here. Oh, I only have 25 shots left. Better use them wisely. Kill this armoured car. Nope. I'm reloading. Reloading the 50. We are reloaded. Never mind, only the artillery. Lucky this was light vehicles. 200 miles an hour, which is practically double a World War One airspeed, but that doesn't matter. It makes for more interesting and exciting gameplay. This is actually a fairly maneuverable aircraft. Wrecks. Let's actually fly low so you can see these wrecks. Destroy enemy vehicles. What are these wrecks? They look like Panthers. Only two left artillery and something else. Oh, it is another triple A. They're over the other side. Oh no. Artillery is in range. There's a kill. Come on, if I can just kill this triple A, I will get the anti-mech. Ah, uh, there's some straight into it. The enemy kill assist. Damn it, somebody else got it. Oh well, I was second. Yay. Um. Right, well, World War One. Did good. If I, hopefully we can replace those precious albatrosses that we lost. Um, oh, all right, new round of Royal Norwegian Air Force. Nice. So Falco got the radiator. Like, stop! I didn't tell you to look for a battle. Why did you do that? I didn't actually tell you to start a game session. You didn't even actually give me time to choose new research things. Then again, I... This, for the CR-42, it'll probably just go over onto the track and to the belt. So I'm fine with that, but now you're just stuck on game session. Right, cancel. Thank you. Uh, right, modifications. Yep, it's going onto the offensive. Onto the offensive belts. HE. Modifications, yep. Continuing researching engines. Yes, purchase. CR-42. Ah, oh, it's already automatically purchased. Nice. Um, right, let me show you the Nimrods. So, Mark II Nimrod. Customization. And this is the Sopwith that I found. Okay, It's not quite the same look as a Sopwith at all, but... So, World War I. World War I biplane. Um, and, oh, okay, thank you. Um, Okay, now you're coming up with this. Why? Okay, well, sure. Well, let's research the airframe. Finish. Okay, thank you. Okay, and that was strange. Um, but now let's look at the Mark One Nimrod. No, don't look at the. There you go. 
There you go, French. This would have probably actually made a more decent um, loadout for um, the Sopworth, but... Oh well. So yeah, that is of a French pilot that is um, just a Sopworth. Um, so let's let's go with World War One again, because I liked flying in my World War One albatrosses. They were fun. It'd be cool if there was actually a game like War Thunder, which only used uh, World War One aircraft. That'd be fun. So you'd have all of the like triplanes and biplanes and the monoplanes actually that came in the later stages of the war. That'd be fun. I would like to play that. I would research all my albatrosses, just have albatross one through to eight. <laughs> just as a massive lineup. Oh there you go. Speaking of albatross eight, here he is. Oh, I don't know, were well, there actually more albatrosses? I don't know. Not so good on the on the World War One planes. Everybody's heard of like, you know, the spats and the Sopwith Sopwiths. And, you know, we've all heard of the Fokker DR eights and stuff that the Red Baron used. And some people will have heard of the monoplanes. The Fokker Eindecker. That was a monoplane. Yeah, everybody knows the Sopwith Camel, which was the uh, the famous British biplane, then you, know, you got the Spad, the French. Biplane, we've got the Sopwith Pup. Um, what else you got? You had the uh, Sopwith Triplane, actually. That was a. And, you know, planes, planes slowly moved from being just for spotting to being actual attack planes. Of course, they did. And in World War One, they never actually. Okay, I'm getting random lag. In World War One, they never actually carried forward-firing MGs. You would have pistols, rifles, actually, is what they would use, and they would also drop um, like massive darts, massive metal darts on the trenches, which had a probably a low chance of hitting people. But if they did, they could split a man in two. I think that's uh, what was said about them. So yeah, they were nasty things. And then, and then you had. You know, actually fitting machine guns and people were like, what could possibly go wrong? And then lots of things could go wrong. You could shoot up your own propeller. And then one one British, one guy from Britain uh, actually. Oh, come on, you're still not dead. One guy from Britain actually um, decided on. Do I have an enemy on my tail? I think I do. Um, actually fitted like steel plates. Um, I do, it's a spiff on that one, eh? Attacking an albatross? Who do you think you are? Um, yeah, he actually fitted like um, metal plates, basically, to the edges of the propellers, that which would deflect the bullets, so they wouldn't actually chop through the propeller, they'd just get ricocheted off. But then that caused its own problem, because the bullets could often ricochet into the pilot. Ah, damn, he took off my wing. Possibly. I don't know, it feels worse handling, but it hasn't actually shown anything. Yeah, that did. Um, but yeah, he, um, 10 kilogram bomb, wow. Uh, and so those weren't very effective because the metal plates on the propellers would just bounce bullets into the person and into the pilot occasionally and kill him. So nobody wants to die from their own aircraft shooting them in the face. Um, and then the Germans decided, ah, we have got an interrupter gear which can fire through the propellers we are amazing and and then yeah and then Britain was like I say how, how do we combat this and then eventually one German aircraft crashed and they were able to go hey, this is actually rather clever we're going to steal this and use it for ourselves and then yeah uh, and then all the planes had interrupter gears to fire through the propellers which is probably what these planes have they probably have interrupter gears to actually um, shoot through their propellers these biplanes so yeah World War One history. Hope you hope you enjoyed. Let's actually go bomb these guys down here. Cause, you know I've got I've got newly acquired ten kilogram bombs. Right. 
Like that. That's so tiny, you can hardly see. Ah, put on. Right, come on, show me the bomb aimer. Drop a couple bombs. And there's some hits. Yeah, I probably should have dropped all of them. Right, bring her round hands. There you go, that got someone. Hey, 10 kilogram bombs. Oh Ooh, see that here. No, drop the rest of the bombs. There you go. Bang, got him. Hey, two kills with six bombs. Alright, so Gladiator. Probably would have actually had more success if I just strafed the things. No. Which is what somebody's doing to me, somebody's strafing me. No. SPD1. No. Too fast, he's a monoplane. I mean, come on, I need. Peter's his hawk. Got some hits on him. Got some hits into his belly. There he is. Oh, kill a sister. No, oh, somebody just killed him. No, still didn't kill. Oh, ah, there you go. I'm on the tail of a hawk, but that's not going well. Gladiator. Hawk. Come on. Let me shoot him. Critical hit. Sort of damage to right wing. Waiting for results. Yay, victory is ours. Let's go home. Come on, go on. Well, that was... That was fun. Only lost one albatross that time. Did a lot better. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking next time we shall go in, um, the new T-34s. Well, the, just go as the rank 2 Russians with the T-34 1940, seeming as I have that. Um, as, oh, we've researched that, right, good, let's continue research of the 109E3. There you go. Right, let's get the offensive 7mm belt finish, yep. And I think, is that the last thing for this one? Yes, it is. Nice. So, these two HGs are done. That, I also researched. It already came with those ones because it was a premium, but these ones I had to research, but there are only four. Um, and I haven't actually used the spad, so you've never seen it. Um, but still. Um, so for this one, we just need to get the offensive 7mm belt and the new 7mm, and then we can start off with the CR42 and actually get all of the researches for this. Um, so I will thank you for watching, uh, and goodbye.